Museum and Inquisition is an all new story arc, right? A massive campaign for you to explore with all new followers and of course some significant returning characters as well. But of course it's got an all new premise. This is the key. It's a world that is set after the events of Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, and one that's been torn apart by war, that's been ripped apart as the nations fall apart, as mages and empires turn on one another, and one where the sky has been ripped asunder by this magical cataclysm that's resulted in this huge tear in the veil, the thing that keeps the demons out, madness all the way around. And what you soon discover as you play through the game is that too much of the chaos that's affecting this world is happening all at once. Too many people are paralyzed, unwilling to do anything to fix this much larger problem for it to be coincidental. And then that's where you step. Because you are going to be the Inquisitor. And you'll be the first one in well over a thousand years to really take that mantle upon yourself. And the Inquisition, as an ancient organization, was ultimately formed to fight corruption and chaos and anything that stood between the world and order. And as an Inquisitor, you're going to bear that mantle. It's going to fall to you to make sure that you head it. And it'll be you that sets its direction because the Inquisition is beholden to no one. Not the church, not governments. It's your organization to build from the ground up and then command. Okay, hey, let's start talking about some of the things that are coming that are new to Dragon Age Inquisition. Some of this stuff that I'm going to start with, we've already actually announced. First and foremost, mounts. Questions you want to ask, or 
or digging on stuff or, or gush or I don't know. Don't punch us in the gut. I don't want to say that. Don't do that. Uh, we'll be there. We'll be happy to have you come back. So, how are we doing? What that 
is, is a side effect of that massive hole in the veil we talked about, the, the tear. These rifts are opening up throughout the world. Demons are pouring out, undead are coming back, magic is going crazy. And each and every one of them represents a real threat to the stability and safety of everyone that's nearby. This one, in particular, is troublesome because it's underwater. It's very hard for us to reach, but long term, the Inquisition would try to find a way to reach it and seal it, if at all possible. We'll leave that for the main game. We've got a fight coming up because obviously we're under attack. And one thing I want to make very clear, Inquisition does not automatically level its enemies to match yours. You can't do it. We could turn around, head on out, and literally everything would fall. Uh, 
we are really the ticket one as these carriers. But it is a valid gameplay option, but not without consequences, as we'll see later. Here, you will notice a cave. It is not a cave. <laughs> My favorite part of this is when you're in a dark place, you of course want to use light. You want to be exploring and something to beat. You have pushed further. Is to make sure that you know, fire, that's pretty mundane. We're in this kind of fantasy world. So we've got a veil fire. It's capable of being lit by ritual. You can keep it burning for a very long time without fuel because it's feeding off magic itself. And as a result, this flame has some special properties which can be very useful when you're exploring. Now, we don't really have time to study these right now. Normally we describe them and take them back to the position, but they're keeping in here. We've got some fighting to do. Now the right 
you can see another cave. Caves actually are something you can enter seamlessly. There will be no load screen, and there will be caves dotting the landscape throughout Grand Canyon. In the world and to your game. Decisions in drag and position are tough and they have hard any consequences. In many cases, decisions you make will have lasting implications. Content will be unlocked, you get access to things you would not otherwise get. There's nothing to be gained by doing that now. Come on, let's see here. Don't you want to see our handy work? In some cases, doors will be closed forever. Something very, very safe in the environment. 
Now this gives us a long term goal. How do we reach that game? Before you know.
hurts. Enemies are at their best when they're challenging you in different ways, not just being tough or big sacks of hit points. That's where Gladiator here has a huge shield deflecting arrows, deflecting spells, making it very hard to take them down unless you use teamwork to properly flank him. Sometimes you even have to open up your roots to reach him in the course of battle. for our alchemy. 
And it's also going to give us access to additional spaces and maybe let us get to that cave. Now, let's get back to the game and take a look at this in action.
pretty good opening for this because again, you got to see this is all live software, no canned video, nothing like that. Uh, it's all rendered in the game, it's all running on a PC and everything, so no tricks. Uh, so it's a really good thing. Uh, we still got more than a year to go to finish this game off. So the team's going to go back, take all this energy back, they're going to build a lot more content, and they got a pretty cool game when it comes out. Thank you. So with that, uh, I'll remind everybody where the Bioware base that is at the second floor. <laughs> Level 2 WSCC. Um, we've got lots more panels coming on. We're all going to head back there now and, and be there tomorrow questions for QA, uh, tweet us, uh, post messages, Facebook, whatever. We'll try to answer your questions. Um, really glad to have you guys here again. We did not live stream this. This was just for you folks here at PAX. So with that, I would say thank you on behalf of the studio, the Dragon Age team, and we'll see you around PAX. Thanks again.